Hello and welcome back. This is ADHD Support Talk and ADHD Support Talk is brought to you by addclasses.com. Visit www.addclasses.com and sign up for helpful online events today. Well, welcome back, everyone. I am Lynn Idris. I am your co-host for the ADHD Support Talk podcast. I am also a productivity and ADHD coach, so I help overwhelmed professionals reduce procrastination, improve time management, and basically take control of their days so that they can get more done with less effort and have more time, energy, and even money for the things that matter most to them. I am a woman with ADHD myself, guys, so I've been there, I've done that, and I totally get it. And I want to help you come out the other side of your ADHD and learn to live well with it and have the kind of success that you can feel good about and feel fulfilled by. You can learn more about me and what I do and the programs and services I offer at www.coachingadvantages.com. I have with me today, um, Jake Kahana of Cave Day, and we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, um, something for which I am a huge advocate in the work I do with my clients. So I think this could be a game changer for some of you. So please you know, stick around and hear what Jake has to share. So welcome, Jake. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, great to be here. Good to have you here. Um, tell our listeners a little bit about you and you know what you do, and we'll jump sure. in. Sure. So I'm a co-founder of Cave Day. Uh, we run a community that uh, helps improve your relationship to work. Uh, and the way that we do that is we run workshops and focus sessions uh, to teach you better ways of working. And um, sort of how you and I started talking is this idea about how Cave Day was started, which is based on this insight that no one taught us how to work. Is that yes. something you, you see with your clients too? It's oh, not absolutely. just us that observe that, right? No, absolutely. I mean, most of us work, actually, the truth be told, most of my clients come to me because the way they're working isn't working for them, right? And right. by working, I don't always mean just like what you do for money all day, you know, during the workday. I mean, in life the in problem. general, right? So, uh -huh. you know, it's kind of like, I think schools have gotten better with some of this stuff. Um, as I you know, kind of saw my kids go through school, they they you know, the teachers taught them how to use a planner. I didn't necessarily agree with how the teachers taught them to yeah. use a planner, <laughs> but at least they taught them about planners, right? I didn't have any yeah. of that when I was younger and how to study yeah. and some of those things. But most of us don't know how to work and we develop these really, they're not, they're unhealthy, but they're, they're, um, What's the word? Unhelpful, if that's a word. I would say counterproductive. Counterproductive, exactly. Counterproductive it's, it's like ways you, of working. You, and, it, and it feels good. But it's sort of because our brain is wired in this way that is like, I want to avoid pain and difficult things and I want to do pleasurable things and I want things that feel easy. And so, you know, I, I'm guilty of this too. And I think, like I said, this is where the origins of Cave Day started. Why do we need to create something to help people improve the relationship to work because I was like I'm doing my work sitting next to my phone watching tv and feeling like oh, man I know that I'm productive I know that I can get things done right I have a portfolio of work in the last decade of things that I'm proud of but like I'm just so distracted right now and I'm so caught up in like I just I don't really want to work I, like and I think in, in the pandemic we've seen this so much more where like the couch is right here. The TV is right over there. <laughs> my refrigerator is right there. And the, the moment that I sit down to do any hard work, and by hard work, I mean like meaningful tasks, the things that like I want to have done, right? Like right. I want to have written that book. I want to have written that blog post. I want to have checked the box on that really big thing. But as soon as I sit down to do it, I'm like, oh, you know what? My desk is a little messy. Let me clean it. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I should refill my water right now. And and oh, uh, the laundry's still sitting in the washer, right? Oh, yeah, better do that. And and so this idea of counterproductive is sort of based on how our brain works, where like um, we want to do easy, feel good things, and so that means right, like couch and TV, and you know, I want to check the box, like I I did the laundry and all these other things, um, and and sort of avoid the hard things, and probably what what you see in terms of like um, sort of ADHD 
things that work, you know, things like body mirroring and social accountability, mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things are, are baked in to cave day. And, and so um, what we do is we, we lead Zoom sessions where, you know, there's a structure and a methodology to helping people actually get their butt in the chair on time, you know, showing up for the session with a group of people. And I think like that kind of accountability and that kind of um, sort of, th there's a magic to like being around other people who are do keep doing the same thing as you. Like, I, I don't know, I, I can't really describe it, but people in our community talk about this idea of magic. We're like, oh, normally I write like 500 words and today I wrote 1500 right. or, you know, what I normally get done in eight hours, I just got done in three. Like there's, there's sort of a magic of, um, you know, in the same way that, you know, working at a library or going to a yoga class, there's just, um, you know, being around other people and having someone, uh, you know, tell you to put your phone away and guide you through this experience is going to make you better because my brain is counterproductive, it's like working against my productivity, you know, it wants Absolutely. to do the, the easy thing. Absolutely. And so kind of in ADHD terms, guys, what Jake's talking about is our struggle with how we process the brain chemical dopamine, right? People with ADHD, we've known this for decades. We've seen it on brain scans for decades. We process the neurotransmitter dopamine differently than the rest of the world does. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter that is associated with feelings of motivation. Um, it's the neurotransmitter that reinforces the things that we want to do and to, I'm not saying this well, but the things that, that we want to do more of, right? So it reinforces yeah. the habits and it reinforces the things that we want and it fires up the part of your brain that is, you know, understimulated or underactive. So that whole tendency that we have some of us are really good at like the overt procrastination. That's what I always call it. Like, it's really obvious that if you're watching YouTube videos, when you said you were going to be writing a blog post, you're procrastinating and you're avoiding. And, you know, that's an obvious one. If you're on Amazon shopping, you know, mm -hmm. or dusting the baseboards or whatever, doing something else, you know, that is productive, but it's a little harder to identify that as another form of procrastination and avoidance. It's just your brain looking for that little happy boost of I got something done or this feels better rather than the, I'm using my quotey fingers that the audience can't see, the hard thing. And the hard thing for us isn't often the thing that is hard from a skills perspective or an intelligence perspective. It's just something that you have a hard time getting yourself started on, getting yourself focused on. Sometimes it's deeper work. Sometimes it's just like the boring, yucky, you know, uninteresting crap that comes with being yeah. an adult. Yeah. Next step, and resonate. Yeah. I, I, there's, there's a lot that resonates there. I, I think in, in terms of dopamine, some of the, the research that we look at and, and um, sort of write about is the idea that our phone is designed, like all of the software, mm -hmm. all of the hardware that we use, our, our computer, all tapped into like things that give us dopamine. So every yes. time you refresh your newsfeed, every time, you know, you see that little red dot and then you get rid of the red dot, right? Like I need to get rid of that red dot, you know, read all my messages and my notifications and get rid of yep. them. That feels good. You get that hit of dopamine. And and when we're talking about deep work or this, you know, the idea of doing hard work, there isn't the same kind of immediate gratification that gives us that hit of dopamine. And, right. And and some of the things that um, we've learned to sort of incorporate and to think about are are things like um, trying to break our work into smaller pieces. So when when your task is blog posts, oh, that's really that's a lot. Like the blog post, I have to come up with the idea. I have to you know, outline it, write it, edit it, find the images and, and do all that thing. And, and like, that's going to take a long time. That's not going to feel good. But if we said, you know, work on this for five minutes, um, write the bad, write a bad outline, write the, the bad version of chapter, you know, chapter one or paragraph one and breaking it down into smaller pieces and being able to like check off smaller pieces of that is helpful. And then additionally, like, the celebration of those small wins yes, and so that's huge the idea of like you got to put your phone away you got to go on do not disturb mode and and do that and and the problem with that is that your brain 
we've, we've all conditioned our brain or we've been absolutely maybe yes that like i i need to i need a hit of dopamine every you know i think the average focus time is like i want to say it's like eight seconds or 10 seconds that's, yeah um and that's because like i'm multitasking i'm jumping from a, a, a news feed to a some work to a slack message and all of that stuff feels good and it feels like i'm being productive when i'm multitasking because i'm getting these hit of hits of dopamine, but I'm not getting any real work done. Absolutely. So when we when we put our phones away and we mute our notifications and go on do not disturb mode, our brain still craves dopamine. And so we need to find ways to in, include that, integrate that into our work with like, you know, ch- chunking our work into smaller pieces and finding social accountability to say, look, every every 45 minutes, we should take a break and, you know, list all the wins that we have like what right. do we just get done in 45 minutes let's you know stretch and feel good about our bodies and sort of you know it, you can get dopamine from high-fiving a friend or having like a really good stretch or um you know a, a small snack sometimes can do it not not suggesting that like you have like a <laughs> candy bar every 45 minutes but um you know uh, a, a handful of almonds or a a piece of fruit or something can also give you that like, oh, this is, this is a little reward for myself. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's key, Jake, is that it's, there's a mindset shift that has to happen in a lot of my clients to um, really make those small rewards. If you want to call them, I I call them like lowercase C celebration. Celebration is a word we use a lot in coaching for um, helping a, a helping a client learn to give themselves credit and acknowledge and you know celebrate the things that are going well, things that they're doing well, positive attributes, all of that kind of stuff. But I always think mm-hmm. of the word celebration as like it's got to be newsworthy, something worth a party, you know, whatever. But it's those little things all day long that really kind of accumulate over time. And when you can start to shift your mindset to give yourself credit for the small stuff all throughout the course of the day, you are giving yourself those dopamine hits. That's one of the things that's so powerful about like that focused kind of multitasking is, you know, what you sat down there for, you've got Mm -hmm. your next actions, you've got, you know, a few pieces that you want to accomplish, you know, you know, what you want the finish line to look like, and you can give yourself credit all of the way through. But that is a shift for a lot of my clients in that whole, I'm not done yet, so I don't deserve to feel good about it yet because it isn't completely off my plate. Yeah. So important. I I, I think it's so important. And what you're saying reminds me of like one of the, the things that we see over and over is that people confuse tasks with projects. Or yes. projects with tasks, right? That like, okay, I, I gotta, you know, fold the laundry and uh, send that email, and you know, those are tasks. I can get it done in a minute. But then, if the the next thing is like update my website or write the blog post, like I said, there are a lot of steps to do that, right? And and so when it feels like, oh, I'm not gonna finish this today. I don't deserve to celebrate. I don't feel like I, you know, I only have 30 minutes. I can't really get started on that blog post. Well. Part of it is breaking it down. And then the, the other piece, which I think I, I, I would guess that you see with your clients and your your listeners is like being clear about what you're working on. Yeah, yes, you know, absolutely. Like writing it down, um, you know, when people join caves, we ask them to like change their Zoom name to include their task. Because like when you see it in front of you and you say, oh, right, I, I'm not on my website or writing my blog, I'm like, blog outline or it's yes. just right in front of you yes. and it's defined otherwise i i had this problem for a long time where it would just be like in the evenings i work and work to me means just having my computer open mm-hmm. and you know maybe i'm like editing a google doc or maybe organizing my files but i i'm like i'm working without really knowing what I, what i'm here to accomplish and so without right. knowing that work is just going to eat up my whole time going to fill my time until I fall asleep doing work. Um, and the clearer <laughs> I am, I found that the clearer I am and the clearer that our, our community and, and members are, the, the more that they feel like I can get that thing done and be done. Like I don't need to just let work take up my whole day, which is such a, a, a I don't know, it's like a part of our culture that it feels like, especially working from home, like the moment I wake Absolutely. up because I work from home, like, 
I guess I'm at work until I go to sleep instead of thinking like, I know my workday starts after I, you know, exercise and go for a walk and, you know, do my little morning ritual. And in the afternoon, you know, if I got all my tasks done, my work is done. Like I don't need to keep working or use right. the, the weekends to catch up because I, you know, I don't know that, that it, it just like such a part of our culture that it feels like it we is. need to work all the time. And I think part of that is related to, I don't know, I need to be in front of my computer instead of thinking like, did I get all my tasks done? Right. Absolutely. And that the thing that, that you're talking about is the way I often frame that some of you have heard me, many of you have heard me say this before, maybe many times that mm. clarity is the antidote to overwhelm. So the more mm. clear you are on what you, I'm going to say this grammatically incorrectly, because it'll take me too long to, to phrase it right. But the more clear you are on what you're going to be focused or what you're going to be focusing on. And the more clear you are on where the finish line is for that piece and what those specific actions are, the easier it's going to be for you to stay on track, not feel overwhelmed or shut down by the sort of the whole thing and to redirect yourself when you find yourself off track, because you will mm -hmm. find yourself off track. I mean, you're, our brains are wired to see connections and tangents and all of those kinds of things. And it's really hard when you have ADHD not to follow them and sometimes not even realize that you have followed them. So when you have that clarity, and that's one of the things that happens in a focused work session, like one of your caves, um, it, is that you go in there clear on what you're going to be focused. When you go to Panera Bread or Starbucks or whatever to work on something, almost always without even realizing it, you're saying, I'm going to sit there with my laptop or, you know, whatever it is, and I'm going to do this specific thing. You don't have to, it's very helpful to have that clarity, you know, when you're going somewhere, but you don't have to go somewhere to give yourself that. You can give yourself that clarity of focus and clarity of action anywhere that you are. And when you double that with like that positive social pressure, you have that mm -hmm. focus, you have that clarity that helps you kind of come back to whatever it is that you're intending to do in the moment. And then you have other people doing the same thing. You've got that energy and you also have other people that, you know, are, are uh, kind of there with you either literally or metaphorically. It's so much easier for you to resist the pull of the phone or the resist of the pull of, you know, I always joke around like the dusty baseboards or, you know, that's always a joke it's in real. my house that if you see mom with a Mr. Clean yeah. magic eraser or a duster, send her back she's to her office because she's yeah. avoiding something, right? But yeah. I'm going to get that dopamine boost because I just noticed how dirt dusty that baseboard was, right? So that clarity can really real. help with that. It's real. It's absolutely real. I'm, if you have the expression or the idea of like the time to be your own manager before you're being the executor, execute like the the worker. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, in, in in our world, we talk a little bit about sometimes sometimes like it feels like we need to just be the the worker. I need to like be the one getting the work done. Mm -hmm. But but taking you know, a half hour a week to plan your week or like 15 minutes at the beginning of the day to like be your manager first right? and say like, what are my tasks? How am I going to prioritize this? Which should be in the morning? Which should be in the afternoon when I like hit that, you know, post burrito nap phase, right? <laughs> like when I, when I like, I'm not going to be doing my best thinking right after lunch for, for me, you know, some people do, um, you know, and, and like being your own manager for a little mm -hmm. bit so that like it, it feels counterproductive because I'm not getting my work done. I'm not right. crossing off my to do, but like sometimes not sometimes actually always when you can like take that time to like think and plan ahead and sort of organize and strategize, like how am I going to get that work done? Right. Then like the execution of it, the doing the working um, comes so much quicker. And so, yes. um, let it, you're not you, you don't have to think like you know what do I need to do next or, or where am I going to find Absolutely. this or like I, you know there's there's also like um less decision fatigue it's sort of like yes, the decision yes. has been made you know yep. it's 11 o'clock I committed to working on this and I'm gonna just do it and so we, we we recommend over and over this idea of like 
making time to review and plan your week, making time to plan your day. And like, we, we call it being your own manager because it's like, you're telling yourself what to do. It's, it's, it's sort of strategizing before you get to do the work. Absolutely. I call it in the, in my groups and with my clients, when I teach that, I don't call it planning. I call it setting yourself up for success because that's what you're doing. You're giving yourself direction. You're making it easier for you to be successful more easily, right? More easily, taking less time, taking less effort, all of those things. And really, once you kind of get it down, I mean, I have a time management um, mentoring group. I, I want eventually that that daily setup where you're setting yourself up and you're giving yourself direction. I, I often call it like setting your GPS for the day, so to speak. You're that that's like three minutes, maybe five minutes, but mm -hmm. then you can come back to it all day long, right? Because stuff will come up, you will get distracted. Yeah. Um, you know, the crisis du shore will come down the pike, something might pop into your inbox. But when you have that direction, and you have that kind of GPS or whatever set up for yourself, it's so easy to come back to. And again, go back to that, you know, the monotasking, that's what we're talking about, eliminating yeah. the distractions, making it clear what you're going to be doing, and when you're going to be done. So you can keep giving yourself those, those little boosts of those little shots of dopamine that you've earned, right? That's, that's yeah. huge. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Mono, I mean, monotasking is like all over our sites, everything, you know, he, he, we talk about monotasking as if it were like our tagline. It's just like, it, it, and it, and it, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure that you talk to other people about this too, but like, it's, it's so much more than work too. It, oh, monotasking everything. Right. Is, is a practice that is like really helpful at work for focus, but you can't just like be, you know, checking your phone while you're eating dinner or like, you know, having 30 things on your mind while you're trying to have a conversation while you're cooking and, you know, having a conversation with your roommate or your partner, or whoever, like monotasking is this practice that like is all over your life. Absolutely. That, you know, if, if you get good at it at home and, you know, by yourself while you're eating, when you're going for a walk, while you're driving, that like it, it becomes a little bit easier to do it when you're working and um, absolutely and vice versa yeah, yeah absolutely completely. so it's really about in like being more intentional with your focus and being more selective with your focus so when we're talking about monotasking if that term doesn't like ring any bells it really is choosing to focus on just one thing at a time that doesn't mean that you can't fold laundry while you watch tv that doesn't mean that you can't um you know be on the treadmill or the elliptical um without listening to a podcast those are i call those things like task dilution so it's doing something that's more pleasant while you do something that doesn't require much focus mm -hmm. but it also it you know, it, it also isn't like, you know, deep work or, or, or the kind of work that requires a lot of concentration. But when you are monotasking, when you are giving yourself that clarity and what you're going to focus on and what you're going to be doing, and you have like the mechanisms in place, you've put your phone away. Um, I actually tell my clients, like, put it in a drawer. It, if it's in mm -hmm. your sight line, there's lots of research that shows you that even if it's off or in do not sure. disturb mode, it's still pulling your attention. And yep. over the course of the day, like that is you know, attention that you've wasted that you could have spent somewhere else. I mean, we only have a finite pool of, you know, mental and physical, you know, energy to expend. Yeah. So those things are really important. I, I think you've, you've hit on two really important things. One being that not all work and not all tasks require monotasking. Right. Like, you know, there's a lot of things that I do that like, yeah, I'm listening to an audio book while I'm, um, you know, doing my design work or something. But when it's time to like get my real most important work done that requires my full attention, mm -hmm. that's the work I'm monotasking. And really it's like anywhere from like 20 or 30 minutes a day to like maybe on a, a, a big day and an important day, it's like two to three hours. It's definitely right. not all day. I think that's one. And the second part, you didn't say this exactly, but something that I, I tell people all the time is like, don't feel guilty that you're bad at this because everyone is bad at it. Our brain is right. wired to want to peek at our phone, to want to look for the dopamine, right? And so it's natural that even when you're monotask, even when you committed to the task, your brain is going to want to say, oh, wait, what's going on on Instagram? Let me just check my phone. Let me just go to my inbox. And 
the thing is to like don't feel guilty about it like that that's not going to help your work no. not, you know shame is not <laughs> helpful to productivity never ever but but it, it's important to recognize and and there's research that backs this that like the the work the, the mental work that's required for focus and monotasking is actually refocus is like training your brain when I noticed that I yes. lost track, when I noticed that I got caught up off guard or interrupted or whatever, that I am able to come back. You know, if you've yes. ever tried meditating, it's like Same you close thing. your eyes and you, yep. you know your brain's going to wander. And the work is not to like get mad at yourself and say, oh, I'm so bad at this. It's like the work is training yourself, to recognizing I'm distracted and to come back. Absolutely. That's, I think, one of the things that and we're, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but you know, speaking of tangents, um, that's one of the things that I hear a lot from um, my clients with ADHD about meditation is, oh, I, I just can't, my brain, I can't make my brain still, I can't clear my mind. You're actually not supposed to, you're supposed to learn to notice. That's yep. what meditation is all about, noticing where your mind is going and then kind of with practice and and repetition, learning how to bring it back to you know, to focus on whatever it is that you're focused on. That's huge. It's an important skill and an important muscle that I think we probably could all use a little more, <laughs> a little more work Absolutely. on, that's for sure. Well, I Absolutely, think this has been yeah. really good, really good stuff. I hope our listeners have found it helpful. Any last thoughts or anything else you want to leave our listeners with and then tell them again, you know, who you are and where they can learn more about what you do? Sure. Um, I think as a final thought, I think that, that what I'm going to come back to is this idea of monotasking, that it doesn't have to be all the time, but it, that it is a practice throughout your whole life that um, none of us start good at, at it and that it starts by practicing it while you're eating w with somebody else, while you're, you know, just going for a walk somewhere, like don't listen to the audiobook, just like whatever it might be, like slow practice so that it, it improves your whole life. I think you said that at the beginning that part of the work you do is helping people find more time and just live a better life. It's not all about productivity and getting more better work done all the time, that it's sort of this complete uh, picture of work and life and, you know, our own taking care of ourselves and, and all that. We talk about the three relationships to our work, to ourselves and to other people. And that, that's the full picture. Um, again, I'm I'm Jake Kahana. I'm one of the co-founders of Cave Day. Uh, we lead focus sessions seven days a week, over a hundred sessions a week called Caves. Uh, you could learn more at caveday.org. We're also at Cave Day on most social media. Uh, so come check us out. We offer free trials and other ways to improve your relationship to work. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you all for listening. I think this is really good information. Um, if anybody, if you have questions, if you have things you want to add, comments, um, please join us in the ADHD Support Talk Facebook community. Um, we're happy to interact with you there and happy to you know, get your input, hear what you have to say, suggestions, that sort of thing. Um, so thanks again for joining us, Jake. Thank you all for your attention. And we will catch you next time on ADHD Support Talk. Bye, everyone. Bye, Jake. Thanks. Bye, Lynn. Bye, everyone. Thank you.